Greg Oliar. Hi, LB. How are you? Is this thing on? I think it is. I, have no I think it's on. I don't know. I have no idea. No, no, it's on. I can see. I, okay. Oh, yep. Yeah, no, there's a little eyeball in the top there. Oh, there's an eyeball. Yeah. Can you see the eyeball? I see the eyeball and okay. I see our eight ball. Yeah. Yeah. There's I there's an eight, but there's eight there now. Okay. So I feel like this is like a um like a party that is a last minute kind of thing. Like like in Days and Confused when they're like, hey, we're gonna we're gonna go to the kegger up on the hill there, you know, and yeah. Matthew McConaughey is kind of driving around telling people that that's what's happening. That's what it feels like to me. Um it, it really feels like that to me. Yeah. I I I I've been dragged along, is what it feels like. And so here I am. Yeah. You know. Well, you look great. Your, your background, I, I, I don't know if Room Raider is one of the people on here, but I think your background, oh. um, you know, oh, definitely should it. should be a 10 out of 10. Thank uh, you. And I got the sunflowers for Ukraine. That's I've heard of this place. This is a place I've heard of. Um, OK. The, yep. The thing is on. People are commenting. I think it looks like to comment, you have to go to YouTube. That's what I'm that's what it says here. OK. So, you know, maybe we should reiterate oh, that Matt Hi, Matt. during the, the course of this. Um, so, OK, so let, let's talk a little bit about how this developed, because um, you and I had talked about doing something for a while and then we didn't didn't. And then at first it was going to be called the combination, because uh, as a an homage to the world beneath and your uh, mob thing, the combination is uh what was it? Uh, Luciano and, and Bugsy Siegel, right? Was that the combination? No. <laughs> okay. This is what's no, called the in volleyball. Ar Arnold, is Arnold Rothstein and, and Johnny Torrio. Oh, that's the, oh, okay. I thought it was, okay. That was the combination. Yeah. So we were going to be the combination and then we were like, it's going to be at, what, what time should we do it? It should be at five and at eight. Okay. It can be the five, eight. And then we thought that can also be the format. So Right. What's going to happen? You can see the ticker there below us has the five topics we're going to cover today um, on this very show. And what we're going to do is we're going to set a timer. And when the timer goes off, we're going to set the timer for eight minutes. And when the timer goes off, um, we're just going to move on. And we do have a yeah. guest. We have a guest tonight, too. We tease we our guest. The, the timer is the hook. So, and just so everybody knows, the guest knows the format. It yeah. doesn't matter. We're not going to warn because I, I don't know if I can actually, you know, you know me. I don't know if I can pay attention to the timer and give like a two minute warning or anything. So when that buzzer goes off, you're out. That's it. It's over. It doesn't matter. If we can't say what we need to say in eight minutes, we're just moving on anyway. So, you know, and, and actually our first guest, I think we'll find this uh is excited about it because nobody really wants to be on these shows for more than eight minutes. <laughs> it's true. It's true. They really um, don't. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's nice to have that hard out and it's Nina Burley guys. So she's going to come on and, um, and we'll talk about her book and we'll, we'll do a little bit up front for her as yeah, well. We'll do a little bit up front before yeah. we set the timer. So, okay. So as we can see, uh, the first topic is Ukraine because we want to start with something, um, you know, we want to start with something newsy we decided. So uh, you make it you sound like there's any planning in this. I, I think <laughs> it is important to understand, folks. There's no planning. This is no this is like maybe maybe 48 hours. Um, but let's talk about our drinks, too. Oh, so, right. Yeah. Everybody, okay. you know, you guys like to have a drink on a Friday night, as do we. And now it's actually cocktail hour for me. However, I'm not drink I'm having you. What are you having? Greg? I'm having a Manhattan, my usual drink. Yeah, um, I'm having a Cranhattan. A Cranhattan. A Cranhattan. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so for anybody who's not who's not imbibing, but wants salud. To imbibe. Yeah. Salud. 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 Mm -hmm. mm. Um, oh, very good. Yeah. Okay. So it looks like the comments seem to be working. I just want to okay. again, if if something happens and gets screwy, you know, we tested this behind the scenes, but until you go live, there's really no way to know what it's yeah. going to look like. It's like when you get your driver's license and you can practice, but you know, once you're behind the wheel and it's dark out, everything, you know, all bets are off. You can only prepare yeah. so much. So yeah. Okay. That's I, I don't remember any of that, but I'm glad that you do. I, <laughs> I think I'm a little older. All right. So I'm going to try this. Here we go. Um, are you ready? I'm ready. Yeah. Here we go. All right. Clock is on. 
Ukraine. What do you want to say about it, Greg? Well, Honestly. you know, since we stopped um, talking and doing live shows, this war happened, right? And uh, even for me at Prevail, um, I took time off like for two weeks. And then literally the day that I took off, he invaded Ukraine. Like it was crazy. So I, um, you know, I had a little time to, to to catch my breath and kind of figure out what was going on. And of course, I talked to Zarina Zabriskie, who has really been paying attention to the, to the things that are happening there. Um, I think the first thing I want to talk about again is just the sanctions and the purpose of the sanctions, because I wrote about this on, on prevail uh, uh, last week, I think, um, or earlier this week. And the purpose of the sanctions is to go after Putin as I see it is to go after Putin. I mean, when you turn on economic devastation like that, I think the word people get lost in this word sanctions. It's such a weak sounding word. We're going to give you some sanctions and then, you know, okay, but that's not really what's happening here. I think, what we're trying to do is basically destroy their economy and cut it off from the world's economy, which is, you know, it, that is basically bringing something that happens during war without the death and destruction. It's a more civilized form of thing, but it's still in, it, at least in theory, and what they're trying to do is pretty drastic. And it also takes time to turn on. Right. So yeah. um, once it's on, it's also going to take time to turn the ship back around. So my thinking with this has always been, OK, we want Russia out of Ukraine. We also want Putin gone out of power. And I know right. a lot of these. What, are you talking about regime change? No one's talking about regime. Nobody wants to say the words regime change. But like to me, that's, you know, that's the purpose of the sanctions. We're, we're saying we're, we're going to you know hold your arm behind your back until you give us an, until you get rid of this guy. You know, send right. him to his dacha, one of his many dachas and put somebody else, some other awful person in charge and pretend that he's good for two years, you know, or whatever they're going to do. But I, I think that that's the whole purpose of it. And Biden keeps saying it and they keep saying, oh, it's a gotcha. It's not a gotcha. He keeps saying it because that's what it is. For God's sake, this man can't remain in power. He cannot. And I'm, it's very frustrating. I think for all of us, we're back in the screaming at the television mode. Um, of, you know, that type of coverage, which is so, it's so insidious. It's so intentionally just to freeze everything in some semantic moment um, and hang it on, hang it on someone. That's not journalism. That That's really not questioning a leader. It's not. Uh, what if you, if, if the press, if the press pool wants to actually bring real questions um, hanging somebody on whether something they said they meant to say, was it a moral saying, was it this saying, blah, 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 blah. When the point is, this man must be removed. Yeah. He's committing a genocide. Yeah. What, what is, what's that, what's that? And we are not in a position to remove him. That's not our role. Nobody's saying this role, but we are in a position to give him the consequences for his actions that he has rightfully deserved for many, many years, and no one has had the guts to give it to him. So now he's got these consequences. NATO is united. There's nothing bad about that. That's great, right? And the, the Western democracies have a chance now to have an, an actual leader in Ukraine saying, this is what it's worth to us to fight for our nation and our sovereignty and to be a democratic nation. This is, we're willing to do this. And so it has inspired everyone. And God damn, we really did need that inspiration. We did. And I'm sorry it's coming at this kind of bloodshed and misery. This is also what you get when you take a mafia puppet, put him through the paces like Putin was put through in the 90s of having little positions here and there, bureaucratic positions to get him wound up put him at the head of the FSB, which they did, and then position him into the presidency. This man came out of organized crime and intelligence services. He came from that intersection. He really did. Um, he's admitted as such. So when you then elevate someone like that into a position of power where they can just say, I'm going to be president for life and corrupt the entire system around them, steal and thieve from the, the, from the people, from their resources, lie his ass off, and then commit these atrocities, that's what you're going to get. 
put somebody in there that profits off of human misery and does it on that behalf of other benefactors in the beginning, he's just going to rise to capo. That's what he's going to do. He's not going to become a different creature. He's just going to be the mob boss. He's been the mob boss for quite a while now. Um, he's had real control over these, uh, over his kleptocracy, over the oligarchy, over the other oligarchs that also came out of organized crime. There are several. Um, and they all pay tribute to him. He gets half of what they earn for them being able to be billionaires themselves. They do his bidding. They corrupt and corrode as much as they can, as much as they want in the West so that he can have leverage and control where he needs it. And this is the, this is, it will only end up here. It will only end up in genocide. It will only end up here. So the Russian people have a choice to remove this man. And we're going to put it to them of, you're going to choose between your nation surviving and thriving or this strong man that you're addicted to. Choose. Yeah. yeah. That's the choice. The other thing I wanted to say about Ukraine, how much more time do we have? I have no idea, Greg, all we are. <laughs> what happened? Oh, we have, I'm not going to tell you. Keep going. Say it. Okay. Quick. Um, quick, quick. There's been a couple of think pieces by like Brett Stevens and other people that oh, no, Putin actually meant to go into Donbass and just do that. And this oh, is complete God. bullshit. I mean, Putin did not invade the entire country and, and expose his military as being complete garbage and shit just to take some eastern region of Donbass they doesn't even really need. It's This is, he fucked up. He fucked up and now people are trying to spin it as he's some great genius. He's not some great genius. Yeah. He's good at what he does, which is, you know, he's a run thug. the mafia there, like you said. Mm -hmm. But that's all he can do. He's a, he, guy's a loser. He is. And and right now he's so divorced from reality that um, it, it, you know, it's really something. Yeah. I And, and, in terms of, I think there is a thing going on right now of why is he getting the approval rating in Russia that he's getting? And there's questioning about the polls. Everything there is so corrupt. So I don't know if you can trust a poll. I don't know if you can the trust- The polls Google. are bad here. They're I don't bad trust here. polls in this country. I, I, not, you yeah. know, I don't think anyone should hang that on the Russian people, but, uh, but then we have to, right? And they're damn good at getting rid of their leaders. <laughs> They've got quite the history of doing this. So I'd like to see a little bit of that return. It is up to them. We'll freeze this guy out. So, the, you know, that's the choice that, that, the, that the free world is putting on the table. It's like, we're just going to freeze you out. And, and good luck with all of your mansions and your yachts. Have fun. Yeah. 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 That's it. It's, uh, it, it, it's a bad scene. And right now they're leaving. You know, they're, they're being thrown. That's it. Okay. Good. Hey, that was, we actually almost landed the plane at the right time. Oh, okay. All right. You're going to reset that thing? Okay. Are we are doing another Good. one? We're going to do another one. Going right we're into it. Go, we're going to go right into another hard hitting news segment. Here we go. Eight minutes. The slap. Heard the round slap. the world. The slap. Bef right before we came on, oh, it was announced oh that Will God. Smith is going to like resign from the Academy. Um, and you had yeah. to take about this. Look, I'm going to let you talk about this because you know more about it than I, I do. So I, don't know. I, I don't know that I know more about it. Um, I did watch it like everybody. I, I wasn't planning on watching it this year. I'm just, I don't know. Um, and I missed so much of it before that. So like literally when I'm kind of started to pay attention to it and I was with a friend and we were starting to pay attention to it and then, and then it happened, right? And it was like, what? Yeah, so everyone had the reaction and everyone's chewed over all of this all week of like, the shock that was it a joke that la 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 la, and then he started yelling like, "Oh, that was real." And then there's all of the waves of processing it and all of the different angles. It was as if an onion field exploded. There were so many layers for everyone to get through from this one very simple act of someone just walking up on stage and slapping a comedian for a joke, bad taste, cruel, sure. I'm done with women being made fun of that way. Okay, but it's it, it's a it's an award show. You're multi multi millionaires. You have tremendous power. Uh, it's not okay. It's a medical condition. Uh, let's you know. There's a cruelty I think that we're all exhausted from. We're just exhausted from the cruelty, and we've been watching a fake comedian do his shtick 
um, for six years and somehow was president and it's, it was all just insane and he's still doing his rallies and it's just, a, he doesn't mean any of it. He's just out there performing and it's not art, it's artless. Um, so I think we get into that. Was that an artless joke? It was. Um, so, and we're, it, it, so there was a moment I think where folks were like, oh God, yeah, stop it, right? However, however, there were other choices. Imagine the choice of taking the microphone and if you're going to take the stage, you're going to jump up and take the stage because you can't because you're in the front row. Why? Because you're the biggest movie star in the world. Think about that platform. Hit the biggest comedian in the world. Oh, my God, the platform on the biggest life stage in the world. It was just the scale of it was mind boggling. Yeah. And then not making the choice. If you felt like you had to get up out of your seat and go up there, you could have taken the microphone and explained. You know, that was cruel. Here's what it's like. I know we're big, I know we're supposed to laugh about all this, but but really, really, Chris? That that's a choice. That could have been made. So I, you know, I don't like people invading other people's bodies. I don't like assaults of any kind. I know that others people don't, but we just have no sacred ground except for our our own bodies. You just don't go into somebody's physical space and attack it. It's, it's just, there's nothing okay in that. There's just nothing okay in it. So I got to tell you, it like the next day, I'm still reeling. Everyone in the industry that it, our colleagues or that I, friends, that it, you know, my agent, everyone, we're all reeling. Everyone's reeling, 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 reeling um, because of these layers, because of yeah. We're constantly being hit with another layer to this thing and, and what to consider. And then, you know, it, it took a, it, you know, you want to hear from the person who, who was injured. Um, I don't know that I considered Jada too much the injured party. There's a little bit there, but to the one that was, I, I think, Chris, I think Chris Rock is the injured party. So the one that was the injured? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and he, of course, is like, I got to take my time with this because that's what it's like when someone, del someone that, you know, especially delivers an injury like that on a live stage, it's arresting. It's, yeah. it, it pulls the ground out from underneath you. And so I'm glad he's taking his time. I know we all want to hear from him. Let him take his time with it. The retirement from the Academy today by Mr. Smith, yeah. uh, you know, was him taking back control of like, I'm going to do this, you know, so that it's not done to me. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fine. You know? I, I think it was Fine. the right way. I, yeah. I, my thing is like, if I'm at a bar and I go up to somebody and I punch him in the face, what happens to me is I get thrown out of the bar. I get 86th. That's right. I may never get to go back. What doesn't happen to me is I go back and sit down and then they give me an award and then they give me a standing ovation. Unless I punch like Richard Spencer or one of these Nazis or something like that, right? And then maybe. But but in a situation like that, that's if, if for normal people, that's how that stuff works. So why not this? I felt like the right move would be 86 of them. Just get him out of there. He wins the yeah. award and he can't give the speech. Then he has a consequence for the action that night. And the whole thing is in a sense over because he's already paid this penalty. I don't yeah. like this revision. I don't think they should take the award away from him. I don't like, that's ridiculous. I don't, I don't believe in going back and, and, and you know, no. the award is supposed to be for artistic merit. It's not supposed to be for moral character. It's almost like the Pete Rose hall of fame thing. Like, uh, you know, should, should, should Barry Bonds and, and, and these steroid guys get in the hall of fame. It, it, it's a joke that they, that they're not in the, you know, that's how the game was at that time. It's reflective of the, the mores of the time and it has to be acknowledged and put in the, in the proper context. I don't like the revisionist history stuff. And uh, okay. I don't think this is the right time to do that. Um, you know, no, but I, 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 yeah. I do think, I mean, you know, it, <laughs> He was a presenter I and mean, he's, he, 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 oh my God, he came out to present and to be part of the show as an entertainer. Yeah. And he was assaulted and there was no protection for him. And he's the one that left the stage. 
he's the one that lost his platform. Yeah. Will, Will yeah. took his platform and then was up there talking from the stage. And, and was and Will so, was the one that was being coddled yeah. by the other big names too, right? Yes. Although, and I know everyone was in shock. I can't even imagine being in that room. I, 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 like, I can't imagine right, being yeah. in that room. It just, you know, and for me, the people who, who got it quickest, for me, were the comedians. Was Kathy Griffin. Was Wanda Sykes. Amy Schumer, in the moment, um, was able to come back out and restore. I, I even didn't mind what Sean Combs did right after in terms of saying, we're going to deal with this like family. Like at least he talked about the fact that, it, that the, the friend hit the friend, yeah. the colleague hit the colleague, the movie star hit the, hit the movie star, hit the comedian. Holy crap, everybody. So I don't think it's, I don't think it's something that it, it is a nice, incredible huge distraction from the horror show of everything else but this isn't the distraction we wanted we don't want this distraction and we don't want that distraction either you were just rolling right. no no that's no. right I, yeah yeah no All we right. don't want that we do not want that distraction we want we you know the the, the i'm gonna can i say one more thing because i'm gonna no end. okay okay that's Fine. it. Everyone will go You're to the gonna grave follow wondering, these rules are... wondering what, what it was I was going to say. No, yeah, for... they have to wonder. That's part I've of already it. forgotten anyway. Okay, um, thank you. All right, so yeah, let's... Yeah, I really bring... did. I forgot. Okay, That's so, hey, now we're... Look, you can see on the thing we covered Ukraine, we covered the slap. Now, Ginny and Cl Clarence, I don't know who, who these people are, but I guess um, our first ever guest is going to come on and, and, and enlighten us. So we're going to bring her on right now. Nina Burley, everybody. Nina, Nina, unmute your mic. Oh, unmute your mic. We're not setting the timer yet. There Hi, you go. Guys. Hi. Thank Nina. you for having me. I'm so honored to be your first ever guest. I'm just thrilled. <laughs> so we have eight minutes to discuss Ginny and Clarence. But before we Ted. get to that, we want to talk about you. We want, we to, want talk to talk about, about you what you've been doing and your and your you've got this this uh um, new edition of your book, Virus, coming out. So uh, tell everybody a little bit about that before we go into the Ginny. Well, I have I wrote a book last year, uh, five essays on the pandemic, covering the medical milestone of the um, vaccines, which people deny, and um, and then also covering the uh, murderous uh, decision making uh, by the former guy's administration. But mostly I was interested in the disinformation campaigns, the weird conspiracy theories that were proliferating. And so the updated book really is about how those those conspiracy theories, which I never thought would have survived into the Biden era, have um, been weaponized, monetized, metastasized. And so that's the new chapter. And there's some new material throughout. So please look for it in your bookstores in or online, I guess, in um, June. I think it comes out mid-June called Virus. It's a very good book. Virus is a very good book. Very Thank well written. You, right. I, I think as, you really, as are your other books. Yeah. Coming and at then, it from an angle that other people weren't coming at it from. So. Well, it was, a, it was a fast write, but I was very, um, very motivated. So, um, and I think, I think it stands the test of time and, and it's a quick read and I hope people will pick it up. Never forget actually what happened. Never forget yeah, what happened. It's a that crazy, a it's a crazy. Americans thing. have died now. Yeah, never forget. About. Yes, we we are of the developed world. We have the most dead deaths from COVID, and that is a shameful uh, situation. So uh, it reflects on our health system, healthcare system, and uh, and many other problems. But um, mostly that wealth inequality, and and then and then and then the in, in execrable way that the the Republicans have actually weaponized mis and disinformation in order to sow chaos and carry on as they were and get their um, their guy back in into the driver's seat. Which, by the way, I just saw an amazing photograph of him on Twitter. Um, oh, with his hands? Yes. What is up with that? What happened? Wait, getting, what? Is he getting like juvenile blood transfusions from Peter Thiel? <laughs> like, are they trying to keep oh, Bernie? Oh, man. Oh, waving? I mean, no. I mean, come on. 
Oh, I saw survival. Sherry Jacobus tweeted about it and said when they can't find good veins in the arms, they that's they go what to I'm head. referring to. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it looks bad. And I don't know. I, look, I feel like these guys are just going to be around forever unless they go out into the direct sunlight or Van Helsing shows up with the wooden stake. I, I just I think we're stuck with them until I will we'll be I'll be long in the in the grave, you know, with this guy. So uh, <laughs> don't I, let I, them I don't know. I, you. Yeah, no, no, you can't. I don't want to be mm -hmm. around. I if they're the only ones that live forever, then I'm out. You know, I don't. I, I, yeah, that's true. That's I honestly, I'm going to disagree with you. And Noel today, you know, saying, tweeting about how this is, you know, this is America's, the sign of America's rot or something. It's not, you know, there are more good people than bad people in this country. Yes, Let's just keep I, hope alive, man. They're, these people are ethically and morally lost. And, um, but we'll be, we'll be okay. I, I, I believe that now. I mean, maybe I'm just oh, mid yeah. it's Midwestern Pollyanna-ish coming out. I can't. I believe it too. I agree with you. I'm talking about vampires. I'm talking about specifically about <laughs> vampires. We, vampires we will always have with us. Yeah. Yes. Vampire lives matter. Something. I don't know. It's that's the cause that like these guys can get behind. Um, <laughs> it's only sexy okay. when the werewolves show up. So I, I'll yeah. wait for them. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, so that'll be your. Nina wrote also. You were could just talk a little bit about when I set the timer, maybe set it up for people to of what you wrote about Ginny. You were one of the first people to sort of break what Ginny was up to. So ready? Okay. Oh shoot, guys, my phone. Hang on. Okay, here. Go. Well, I don't know that I was the first person to write about Ginny. I mean, she's been covered before, but what I did write for the New Republic after the uh, insurrection. Um, was how the um, the women for Trump and their allies were the uh, pearl wearing, um, sweater set wearing, spindle heeled, donning, um, Trojan horse for the oath keepers and the bat wielding fascists and the gallows building. Um, you know, murderous fantasists of the, um, of the insurrection and, and that the park service probably wouldn't have given, um, a, uh, permit to the oath keepers and the proud boys, but they would give a permit to somebody like a, somebody who looked like a Ginny Thomas. I'm not saying that Ginny Thomas was one of those women. Exactly. She's part of that group, those groups. Um, but, you know, they are these these women and I've written about them extensively. As you know, I wrote the book about the Trump women before this the yeah. pandemic book. And I've done a lot of thinking about the conservative woman all the way back to for at least now 10 years since I covered them at CPAC early on in my in my uh, career. And, and I, I just think that they they're fascinating because the contortions, the logical contortions and the the contortions that they go through to um, to excuse the misogyny and the the, 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 the habits of the patriarchy uh, that are so damaging to women um, are just fascinating to to witness up close and to see uh, you know the results of um, in in you know in our society now. I mean, they are the minority, and they have managed to. Um, you know, force upon us the Supreme Court now that is going to outlaw reproductive choice for women in many, many states. And, um, and, and, and that is going to throw us back into the dark ages in ways that we have never experienced ever in our, most of us in our lifetime. And I'm on the old, I'm on the old end and I don't remember, uh, abortion being illegal. I don't remember, um, back alley abortions. I don't remember people going to Mexico. I don't remember people getting sick and dying of um, hemorrhages that from self-induced abortions. And this is where we're headed now. Um, and the, the, the loathing, the self-loathing that this represents for these women, but it's not just that it's that they've attached themselves to the patriarchy. They attach themselves to these men, the, their system of power uh, so that they can gain power. And it's a way for women to gain power. And they do get a kind of a power. It's a subversive kind of a power. Um, you know, the Melania's of the world have a certain power. Um, 
the uh, and then Ginny Thomas is Clarence Thomas's wife, of course. And um, Jane Mayer has written terrific, you know, recent article about her and her history and her family growing up in Nebraska. Um, strangely, in the you know weird universe that we live in, she grew up like next door to Kurt Anderson, who became the um, editor of New York Magazine, and of course is not a um, uh, Midwestern uh, right winger. And and he tells uh, Jane Mayer in this article that her family, the 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 um, the Ginny Thomas family, of course it wasn't Thomas then. I don't know what her maiden name was. Wow. Um, was conservative in the way that the right wing is conservative now back then. So for his, for the Goldwater conservatives of, you know, mainstream right wingers in the 60s, 60s, 70s and 80s, her family was already way out there on the fringe. And now you see this fringe person is in the, in the power seat where the daily beast story today, I, I recommend your listeners to check it out is Fantastic. It's fascinating. It's a great scoop. They got personnel people from the Trump administration to talk about how completely batshit this woman was and how she had. Oh, yeah. And she's also a former cult member. So she's got these manipulation techniques that she learned in the cult. She really figured out how to work Donald and she would come and, and she would come, you know, Flouting, flaunting into the uh, residence, and he, she, she had, you know, pretty good access to him, with lists of potential um, staff and also enemies lists. And the personnel office, according to the Daily Beast, these kids, or these young people, were they were just horrified every time they saw her come in because they started to realize every time she came in when she left, the boss was shrieking mad because she had named, you know, deep state enemies that he needed to fire. And the list of recommended hires were people who were just, you know, they were so far out there conspiracy wise that they weren't even allowed on info wars. Think about that for a second. Oh, That's who Jenny Thomas is. That who That is who has the ear of one of the most powerful judicial people in the United States right now. And I want to add one more thing. You know, there's a lot of discussion right now about whether he should recuse himself and how this can be done, because there's nothing in our law that can get rid of him other than within right. the Supreme Court system. John Roberts, Chief Justice Roberts, is on the record saying, you know, we're not polit this court is not going to be politicized. Don't call us politicized. Well, I'm old enough to remember that when John Roberts was uh was appointed, there were stories about his wife and his wife, Jane Sullivan Roberts is a lawyer and was a member of Feminists for Life, active member and did pro bono legal work for them until she apparently is no longer practicing law. I just remembered it today and Googled and you can, st I just tweeted a link to Feminists for Life where they're crowing about how they've got this great pro bono lawyer, but it's back in the early OOs. And I don't know if she's still doing it, but that tells you a couple of things. One, there's our moderate right now. That's who the guy, that's the guy that we're looking for going because he does sometimes waver onto the side of like ACA. That's the guy that we're like, okay, you're kind of moderate. Thank you for being there. And also he's not going to, he's pot calling the kettle black. He's not going to show, throw, sorry to use that analogy. He, he's not going to throw Clarence off any case because his wife was doing the same thing, not to the same degree and not with such brazenness. But the same thing was going on. So, you know, this is our these are the leaders of the judicial system that we got from from John Leo and and, and, and the Federalist Society. We are stuck with them until, you know, the Democrats get their act together and start, you know, calling what it is it what it is and really, really coming out and, and organizing people. And I mean, not just organizing, but getting their message right. And hopefully this January 6th committee has enough things up their sleeve that they're waiting to drop and they have a nice little October surprise before 22. Okay. That's it. All right, Nina, that was great. Thank you so much. Nina, you did it. Good luck with your new podcast, kids. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.
All right. So there that's it is. It. It's, like, it's like this is the, the it's like a dunk tank at at the at the county fair, right? It we, is. We throw the ball and blink. She has to go away. He that was really go. fascinating, yeah. though, uh, especially the, the part at the end. I yeah. have no hope for no. Robert. You don't get to talk about it more either. No, right. We can we can have a minute, and also I want to say where we can find Nina at, at on Twitter. Everyone oh, should yeah. follow yeah. Nina Burley. Like you can find her just with her name at Nina Burley. It's Burley. It's pronounced Burley. I say Burley. as someone whose last name is always mispronounced. I feel it. It's it's it, it it's Burley. Nina Burley. Um. Yeah. Okay. So are we gonna go? We're gonna go into the next topic now, which is the very cryptically titled Hurley Burley. The Hurley Burley. All right, here we go. Okay, Greg, what do you mean by Hurley Burley? Well, Hurley Burley was a was a, a beautifully phrased uh, tweet put out by um, E. Jean Carroll. Was it E. Jean Carroll, right? E. Jean Carroll, that's and right. And she said something like, "Why is it that ever, you know I can't even want to imagine the Hurley Burley that goes on in the Thomas's bedroom or something like that?" And yeah. uh, Hurley Burley, so good. And I thought to myself. I, I also, my brain goes there with these two. Why does my brain do this? My God, am I trying to torture myself? Am I a horrible masochist? What is it? And I remembered, oh, right. It's because Clarence Thomas made us all think about this because he's a sexual harasser. That's right. And during his uh, confirmation hearing, all of this stuff came out with Anita Hill. And we had to hear about Long Dong Silver and, and visualize for weeks his pubic hair on a can of soda. Uh, and that's it. So that's what I think about when I see this guy. Nothing he's done in the in the interim has uh, changed my perception of him as being this, this sort of horrible person. So, um, right. Yeah, and, the, I, and we're constantly, that's constantly coming at us from the, what's now the GOP, right? Just yep. constant. We have got this Madison Cawthorn giving us like I I don't want to you know the reporting around Marjorie Taylor whatever I don't even like Matt saying Gates it. Matt Gates can't Matt say it without Gates Matt Gates and his stuff yep. and then the and then Lauren Bobert and her husband who was arrested for exposing himself I guess Marjorie it's, Taylor Green Manafort Roger Stone it's constant it's constant Roger Stone and his swinger stuff and he's like he was out before any of them just out and proud of being a weirdo right like, which a, is great weirdo. we're not trying it's to shame like, anybody here. Not and shame Fine, it's just like but it's constantly in our it's in our face it's in the and it's yeah. not like let's dig up dirt this these are this are their, their lives like this is the public record of of these folks and um you know and it's just uh it just it's it's disturbing um i also think you and i were talking about how whenever this topic comes up for me, or people for me, I'm, I'm thinking of George Hahn now every time I say for me. Um, I I do think of Dennis Haystert now mm. because he was, wasn't he the longest running Speaker of the House? He was certainly, we know this for sure. He was certainly okay. the longest running pedophile Speaker of the House. That's I think we right. can say that for sure. Yeah. Oh my God. So I, I go there because he was really the sort of, we talk about a patriarchy for the young Republicans uh, and that member, that whole young Republican club and all that stuff. And the leaders that we're stuck with now that have are in there are, we're all sort of, you know, in the, in the era young and, and getting into politics in the era of Dennis Haster um, from Paul Ryan to Jim Jordan, like these, even though Paul Ryan's now on Fox news board, but this is so it's sort of like, what's going on inside that political party? I can't help but I can't help but go there. And why did Kevin McCarthy react finally of all of the just debasement that's been going on from these House men members, especially? Why when when Cawthorn says orgies and cocaine? Mm. why why not all the why not when he was at the eagle's nest and celebrating hitler that wasn't the line that wasn't why why is there this sudden oh my god the reaction oh you can't say that what's what's going on there there's something very strange and i know there's all kinds of conspiracies and i know someone like me who who studies you know and and 
and does writing and does, you know, creates media and creates art around um, the kinds of individuals who do things like honey traps and do then infect politics with sex and drugs and, and illegal shit so that they can have leverage and have power. So I can talk about Putin, right? Yeah. You know, that guy talk about, you know, somebody with this, you know, credibly uh, alleged by Alexander Litvinenko and Felshinka and these people, former FSB that, Putin has compromise on him and he's somebody that was like a Dennis Haystert. Um, yep. And that's why, how he got into his position of power. So there's something, there's something going on here, guys. And I, I, it's not, I'm not trying to push anything in that direction. I just, there's culturally something happening around all of this um, and the cravenness of it and the sort of Caligula nature of it that, uh, it's disturbing and it's part of the sort of the rot that I think we have to just elect it out, right? We have, we need to put decent human beings. If that's our bar. Now our bar is just, let's just put some decency into our leadership. <laughs> like that, yeah. that's going to, that's going to go a long way. Um, so like you're yeah. going to run on a no crazy asshole platform. Okay. I think so. I think we yeah, can get behind I, that. I, I could get behind that. I, 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 you know, also don't, I, you know, all of the stuff that Nina was talking about in terms of a patriarchy pressing down and the, and the women who are making it all okay. Again, here in 2022, making it okay to strip women of their rights over their own body. Back to the slap. That's it. That's all we've got is our body. It right? isn't, like, it isn't, it's it, fascistic too. Like we really need yeah. to get to the point where we look at the assault on women's health as fascists, because that's okay. what it is. There is nothing more, nothing more authoritarian than forcing a woman to carry okay. to term a pregnancy that she does not want. Nothing. The state wants to be in, in the room to make a medical decision. Like they like to create this like, oh, look, it's the little baby fetus is going to be the cute baby. But that's not like a lot of abortions are because the woman's going to die. That's, that's right. the facts. Like, talk to anybody, and they'll tell you that. The the you know, and um, I guess though, to be a really good anti-abortion activist, you have to have a couple of you know, maybe five, ten fetuses in your deep freezer. Is what we're oh, also really God, yeah. talking about. Yeah, that comes yeah, back to Clarence Thomas too, because the guy that owned that building Thomas. was was clerk for Clarence Thomas and is in the Federalist Society, Leonard Leo's Federalist Society, radical Catholic. Leonard Leo, another guy who's a Leonard Leo guy, by the way, is Mick Mulvaney, who's now been hired by CBS News. Somebody, I forget who it was, said it should now on Twitter said it should now be C hyphen BS News, which is <laughs> maybe great yeah, job by I you. I can't remember. It. I'm sorry. I can't remember who, who said that. Yeah. I do have I have a Clarence Thomas tidbit, even okay, if it beeps. It. I'm going to have fast. to tell you. Why we can wait till after beeps because it's important. It is a hurly burly. Oh, OK. So, yeah. OK, okay so. I it's not about like, Hurley Burley, but it is about Clarence Thomas. Yeah, I feel like what E. Jean Carroll did was she gave us she gave us a term for this, right? Even Burley, though it's, oh, so it's good. been out there, it's so good. It's just like, oh, you're forcing us to 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 imagine, envision, and contend with your own Hurley Burley, and we don't want that. We don't want that from justices. We don't want to think about what's going up in that robe. I know that 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 Jenny and and Clarence are in that robe together. She is in there. She's in yeah. there with him, right? Making those decisions. Up. Oh. Up. Oh, that's it. Okay. That's so it. this is actually the part of the show. We also modeled this LB after the the you know liturgy, right? So we have a little bit four things. Now's the time when we when For we my pause. Dad. Yeah. We do announcements, and and I don't know, you know, my, the, the, I'm I'm just go by the Catholic template, which I think everyone just rips off anyway. It is a very good template, I have to say, yeah. as a lapsed you know person. So this is the time. When we make announcements, we would pass the 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 uh, the, the uh, what do you call it? the basket around, and then we would uh, wish each other peace. Right? That's what we do in, in, That's in, right. in Catholic Church. Yeah. We say, so we take a little you. break. We take a little break from the eight minutes, and yeah. we just sort of say. So uh, basically, folks, this is when the advertisers. Would come yeah, in. and we do have one ad. We're gonna play gonna the ad play in it? a second. Okay, we're gonna play God. the ad in a second. I think everyone, thank like God. the people watching this, have already seen it, but we're gonna play it anyway. Okay, good. Um, I, I do have something important to say. This was brought to my attention yeah. by Nia Molinari. So shout out to her. Okay. You know, she's written on my prevail site. Okay. 
there's weird stuff going on with in the right wing, crazy, crazy land. The people that generate these stories. He was in the hospital a couple weeks ago and he was in the hospital. That's for right. A week. Almost forgot about and that. There were, oh, my God. Is it COVID? No, it's not COVID. Is he on a ventilator? We don't know. What's now percolating in these hard right, crazy cuckoo things is that Clarence Thomas was poisoned using thallium, which is something that the Russians use. Okay. Now, remember, this is the same, roughly um, the same time when we hear about the poisoning of Roman Abramovich and yeah, Ukrainians yeah, yeah. that go to the. So there's this poison thing all of a sudden, front and center. There's been articles about it suddenly in various Murdoch properties mm. about thallium poisoning. And this is a thing that is happening. So as Biden sort of announced what Putin was going to do in eastern Ukraine before it happened, this is something that you know, maybe is going to come out. They're, they're going to start talking about like the Alex yeah. Joneses are going to start. The deep state is trying to kill Clarence it's, Thomas. It's offensive. Yeah. So the, this yeah. is all, this is the muddying. This is the nonsense. This is the noise. Yeah. This is the muddying. This is using radicalization of a, of a, a huge significant part of our population to create enough noise and distraction and just garbage and muddying into the discourse that people just give up and move on and don't know what to do because something's coming, you know, something's coming. And this is what we you know, keep, we'll all keep our eye on the ball uh, is what I would say to that. Yeah. yeah. Valium yeah. poison. What do you, what do you, what do you think about that? Cause you didn't know this. We didn't plan I didn't know this. this. I know. Yeah, I, I've stopped paying attention to those online forums, you know, those right wing forums. No, no, I, I wouldn't have known this, but but she, she it'll pointed fry it out your brain. And, uh, um, yeah, yeah it's it sounds about right. It sounds a little pizza gate. You know, these where do you go from pizza gate? They just keep going higher and higher and higher. They just keep getting um, bigger and McDonald's bigger. McDonald's gate, Wendy's gate. I don't know. It's gonna. It's gonna so this is just it. Watch, watch who's pushing it. Always watch who's pushing it. Mm. And yeah. there's, you know, only a couple key players that start this stuff. Yeah. Uh, and they always start it in a coordinated fashion. And then they have fake fights or they do whatever. But and all of them. And one of their names play. rhymes with like spin. I'm just going to say, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, does. it does. Right. It rhymes with like spin. Um, right. All right. Yeah. OK, so and we okay. also are doing this here. So you're going to play your thing. We're taking this right. little break here because but, we're going to do the same thing to ourselves that we did to our guest, Nina. When this alarm goes off after the last thing, we're out. It's good. It's good night. And well, then we should for, say now. Wait, we, we should know. say now. Wait, I'm going to go back to the comments because I, okay, I want to say before then, you know, in case we get cut off. Okay. Thanks to everybody for watching. I know this was a very sudden, weird. <laughs> hey, let's. You know, we're just gonna. It's like we're we're like Spock and and Kirk suddenly beaming on some planet, right? Yeah. And people are here watching, and thank you for watching. Um. Thanks, you know, everybody. We're, we're excited to be, uh, to be talking, to be other. enjoying yeah. uh, Friday night with uh, with our friends. You know, it's yeah. good. Um, good. Yeah, it's good. Okay, so. Uh, Let's go to the ad. I'm still, you know, I'm still figuring this shit out, too. So. Okay, this is like, I, I can't even believe we're, we're succeeded this far. I, um, it, I'm just delighted that it that it's working at all. Okay. We'll, we'll get our we open to a hellscape, a city, New York in ruins, rubble, newspapers blowing in the wind, dead bodies. And when the lamb opened one of the seals, I saw a white horse, and he went forth conquering into conquer. Close shot in one of the papers, Will Putin nuke us. And when he had opened the second seal, there went out another horse that was red, and there was given unto him a great sword. Cut to Moscow. Death and devastation. Nothing survives. Not a living thing. And when he opened the third seal, I beheld a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. Now in Washington, complete annihilation. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I saw a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and Hell followed with him. Slowly, we zoom in on a pile of debris. And when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. We hear the sound of clawing, scraping. A manhole cover opens. Now pops a man in a black robe. And I beheld when he opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. His face is out of focus as we watch him climb out, and his hand are some documents. 
and when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. Close shot on his face, the last human being alive on earth. It's Merrick Garland, and he is holding the last document to be unsealed. An indictment. I'm ready, he says. I'm ready to indict Donald Trump. This fall, Dilatory Pictures presents End Times Attorney General. Rated R. I think it should be rated PG-13. You know. Right, get, all, get all four quadrants in there. But possibly. It's, it's rated R because it's, it's boring legal stuff. I think. It's, 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 <laughs> Which brings us to our the final last topic. <laughs> final topic. Here we go. Eight minutes. <laughs> this is just ridiculous. What we're doing. Well, so the final topic is DOJ. I'll start. You win. Maybe we'll end up with a rant. I'm not sure. Um, but look, I- I'm of the mind, and I think you are too, Greg, because I know we've talked about this. This is basically you guys are getting our a little bit more dressed up version of our every morning, three o'clock in the morning. I text Greg because I'm awake because, you know, I'm an insomniac. And Greg walks. And so he's out there walking. And so I'm like, okay, I'm up and get my coffee. And we just chat every morning. So this is what we're bringing to you. No, no, but the chat this is always chat. like, you're like, you're like, yo, these motherfuckers don't. don't, don't, don't. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I do it's, have a. It's great. It's, it's awesome. It's, it's a different <laughs> vibe. <laughs> it's a little saltier. But anyway, so here is my thing. I know that there's breaking news and uh, the tea leaf readers and all. Oh, it's like it's he is going after, you know, finally legal Twitter has stopped hitting at us and, 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 and fighting each other. And they're all sort of like a little bit hopeful that they, okay. So I'm still in the camp and this is not me taking the wind out of anybody's sails. And it's not, and it's never has been Greg and I ever calling for somebody to be fired. I don't think we've ever done that. Or nope, this, no, we have not. We have never done that. Um, we just wanted communication and we, we got a little bit. We'd like a little more because we're sick of reading the fucking tea leaves. How about that? Yeah. I'm sick of it that it, that the future of fucking demo- of our own democracy comes down to us reading tea leaves. Uh, it, but fine, I guess. It's not even us. Bad. It's, it's Adam all Schiff and Lawrence Lawrence grand jury. Okay, illegal Twitter, fuck off. Okay, that's what I have to say to legal Twitter and legal Substack, even more so. Go, you can really yeah. go. You need to go. <laughs> but for the DOJ and all this tea leaving and we have and our dear friends are like the ones that are out there going no we're going to champion the doj and protect our institutions and we we support them and we're all for that just wake me up when fucking mike flynn or rudy giuliani or alex jones or roger you know stone. Uh, uh, roger stone or any of the kids or just how about the cocaine uh, the, i'm sure the cocaine was in charge of one of those oath keeper segments you know i'm sure that by now, if we can have animated slime that's robotic that can go into your body and find like a, you know, an ulcer and cure it or whatever the fuck they think they're going to do by putting that slime in our bodies, that robotic fucking slime. If I, I'm sure that they can animate the cocaine and so that it, it can like direct an ins- the next insurrection, it would be a little bit more interesting maybe instead of it all being concealed. So because those people, you know, we're all high as me then. So we just wake up when that happens. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not interested in the eye patch guy that lives in the hole in his backyard <laughs> with his wife. I don't care. I don't care about this guy, right? And 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 like, oh, they roll it up. They're rolling it up like a mafia trial. You don't have to. You don't have to roll it up like a mafia trial. You can just. We watch them do it. Fucking arrest them. And by the way, I gotta get this in there. If Jenny Thomas is texting the Republican leader the gop leader in the house you and and this was a house and a senate trying to hold the floor the gop trying to hold the floor to delay the certification do you really think she didn't do that with mitch fucking mcconnell mitch mitch mcpurple hands maybe i'd like to see those texts because mitch mcconnell sure was worried wasn't he in in spring of 2021 he's out there there's reporting from over a year ago or just a year ago of this guy saying to people as a person 
a favor for me. I need you to not approve the January 6th commissioner investigation in the Senate. Mitch McConnell was asking people for a personal fucking favor. You don't think that has to do with Clarence Thomas and and his, you know, Siamese twin, Ginny? They're like the, the, they're like the snakes in the jar. They're like the two-headed baby. Talk about the thing. Maybe the woman with the fetuses in the jar, right, that, that kept the fetuses in her house has a two-headed... Uh, who fucking knows? But that's all I see when I see Ginny and, and Clarence. That's what they are. And I cannot imagine that Ginny was not in communication with more than just Kevin McCarthy. Kevin McCarthy? I mean, the guy, he can barely handle his shoe size. Bless his heart. His feet are so big. I think that's all he's got going on. And so he can be this brain. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. He has big feet? Oh, you don't know? You haven't noticed that? Oh, this explains the whole Madison Cawthorn orgy thing, LB. Yeah. Okay, as you were. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. All right, that's my little thing. <laughs> that's my wake me up. Wake me up when someone actually gets indicted that doesn't live in a hole in his backyard and wear an eye patch because he poked himself. Someone I've him. heard of before six months ago. I don't know who this Oath Keeper guy was. I wouldn't know him if I was pissing on him. I want someone I know to be arrested. Like, why is Mike Flynn? Why the fuck off? We already had him. We're not contesting the pardons. We're not doing, well, uh, we have to, we can't uh, the pardon. Oh, blah, 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 this bullshit. And look, I, I get it. I don't think Merrick Garland is corrupt. I think he's a good man. Blah, blah, blah. My ad said it all. I think by the time he pounces, it's going to be too late. That's all I'm saying. And, you know, because already it's been, you know, a year and change now. And I don't know. I guess maybe they're going to indict people. I hope. But like when? And then I read something where they're going to wait till 2023 to indict. And it's like. Forget I, it. The, the sooner the better. You know, like I wrote the thing yeah. that the, today. I talked to Claudia Black, who's, you know, who's fantastic. Yeah, fabulous. And oh. it, it, it made me think of. um shock uh the shock doctrine the, the naomi klein book um mm. which is basically um disaster capitalists take advantage of these horrible things that happen to impose their changes um on society you know and we don't want that to happen man and uh no like but it's I, but it's like so here's the other part of it is how you know justice is so important a, a rule of law is like uh, is what we have as a as a free nation no one being above the law is the principle that we all believed we were operating under um i don't i don't know what we do in terms of reform and how to get out of this but i'm really sick of everything kind of boiling down to the spine and the awareness and the integrity and the ability to assess, you know, just be alert, just be awake, right? They just to, 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 to what the actual threat is, down to sort of one old white guy. Like it, it, it's a problem, everybody. <laughs> this is a problem. Um, and so, you know, and I don't know that everything we've been doing on Twitter all this time and in social media and doing this stuff, I'm not sure what a difference it makes. I know it makes a difference for our own minds and our community and just for our sanity. But uh, I'm not as hopeful, and I'm sorry to end on that note. I'm just not as hopeful as everybody else, and I want to be, and I used to be, and I'm losing it a little bit. It's I not really going to take much to get you back onto the thing because it will take one indictment. It'll take one whopper. That's it. I'm not ending on that. Fuck that. Uh, it'll yeah, take well, one. Great. The rules. It'll take one whopper of an indictment, and then you'll be right back on the team. That's what I have to say. All right, so. Oh my God! It's also exactly an hour. This is so okay. look at look at look at the coordination involved with this. It's a, it's a it's genius. It's almost like timing it as a thing. It's okay, almost so, like yeah. you're a genius. Oh wait, right. the show is called the Five Eight, and there is a Twitter page, and it is what is it? The underscore the underscore five F I V E, and then the numeral eight. That's it. Okay. But well, no so, one's going to do anything with this food. Are you going to run that Twitter? I'm not running that Twitter. So people I think it should be, I want it to be one of the Twitter feeds that has like a hundred thousand followers and follows nobody except for Mark Campbell, who it's following now. That <laughs> would be so no funny. Sense. Yeah. All right. Like you go to Zelensky, Zelensky has like 10 million followers and he's following no one. Yeah. 
That's the, that's the shit. That that's power, man. That's power, baby. Yeah, that's power. That's power. Okay, we gotta go. Um, we said we weren't gonna do this. We gotta go. Look, I I I I have to thank again everybody for watching. This has been great. I've been I've been following the comments. It's I can't comment while the thing is on, but I do want to thank everyone for coming. Mm. I want to thank everybody for commenting. And uh, are we gonna be back next Friday? I think we should be back next Friday. I, I have no idea. I I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're, you're asking me to, if that's like, oh my God, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Okay. We'll see. And with, and with that firm commitment, thank you. I think that's the way, that's the way to end. So, okay. Okay. Guys, seriously, thank you so much for watching. Um, this has been the five, eight. I'm Greg Oliar. That's Lincoln's Bible. Stephanie, can I say your whole Stephanie, name? Can I of say course. It? Yes. The whole course. name. I can say it. Sure. Yeah. I'm Greg Oliar. It's Stephanie Kopp. I never say your whole name. I, never I know. Do. Well, you just did. I just did. <gasps> you might get oh, struck no. by lightning. You're you going to get recruited by... into Mossad. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody. I have, a, I have a very quiet audience member. I just made her spit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're, we're ending there. We can't end. Yeah. Okay. okay. Good night. Good night.